In order to prepare an MR sample tube, uh, you're going to need your sample. Uh, it may come in a as a solid or a liquid, depending on what which unknown sample you received. Um, you, if you're going to use all of it, as in you've already done your IR analysis, um, which by the way, if you're not sure how to use the IR, you should go back and watch the IR lab video. Um, once you're done with the IR part, uh, you, you can use the rest of the sample for uh, NMR uh, analysis. So you could potentially do this sample prep in the vial uh, that you received, or if, you haven't, if you're gonna do IR after the NMR, uh, you could put uh, the amount of uh, the sample that you're gonna need, um, at least 30, 40 milligrams or so, about 30 milligrams or so of the sample in a test tube that's pre-weighed and maybe weigh it again that way you know about how much you're using. Um, once you have your sample in a, either a test tube or in the vial, um, unknown sample vial, you will want to uh, dissolve that in deuterated chloroform. Uh, comes in usually comes in a bottle like this and make sure it says deuterated, not a regular chloroform. And uh, I'm not going to use this right now because this is um, a very expensive solvent and for that reason I want you to be very careful about um, how much of th this uh, expensive solvent you use. You will want to obtain a calibrated um, pasture pipette. I don't know if you can see the black line here. I've calibrated this so that the line here represents one milliliter of liquid when I take up uh, uh, this, uh, liquid. And um, you will want to just copy where the line is from another pasture pipette. That way you can have a brand new clean pasture pipette uh, that has not touched anything whatsoever that will hold one milliliter. And so let's right now pretend that this is the deuterated sample or solvent. And if I take it up to the line, uh, this is a, approximately one milliliters. And what I'm going to do is to dissolve the sample I didn't have any, but let's just pretend there was a sample in this test tube. Dissolve the sample with the deuterated chloroform solvent. And what you can do is you can carefully pipette this up and down. And again, every time you're using a pasture pipette, always be careful about not letting anything get into the uh, pipette bulb. That's the worst um, thing you could do using a pasture pipette. It, it would be a very horrible source of contamination and other issues. So carefully pipette this up and down. After you have made your uh, NMR sample solution, you can take that up and uh, um, fill your NMR tube with it. And you need about 0.7 to 8 milliliters to cover about that much of the NMR tube. Okay, so um, this is almost on the too much side, but it's about, you need about at least about that much of a liquid in the NMR tube. And, and if you're not sure what the height is, there's a gauge right by the NMR uh, spectroscopy instrument that tells you how high the uh, sample height needs to be. Here that your NMR sample tube is labeled, uh, this, is, this would be a good place to label with uh, marker right here on the top the uh, the cap for the tube now once you have your sample ready you will of course want to come to uh, head over to your NMR instrument and on the top it looks like this if you open the top um, top cover here you'll see a valve this is for the air compressor uh, what you want to do is to open this slowly you don't want to open this very rapidly because if you do uh, the sample that you just uh, saw coming up from the, the instrument, maybe I'll just show you that one more time. If you open this very slowly, you'll see the sample come up. You don't want this to come up too fast because if it does, uh, it'll shoot up um, out of the instrument and you want to take the sample out. You actually want to leave the uh, air hissing like that while you're switching the um, sample holder from the tube that's already in to um, to your tube. Now that I took the sample tube out of the machine, I'm going to take the holder off of the other tube and then put my sample tube through the 
temple to hold it. Now it's important that this height is at a very particular precise height and for that reason there is a before you insert your sample though, uh, you will want to make sure that this portion of the tube is actually especially clean as well as the spinner or the sample holder. Um, if it has any fingerprints or anything like that, that would be uh, sticky enough for this to get stuck inside the NMR tube or NMR uh, instrument and it will not spin proper, properly. And I'm not talking about the spin of the nuclei, but uh, to average the direction of uh, nuclei magnetic fields lining up, uh, what the machine does is using the air compressor to spin this whole tube so that everything gets averaged down nicely, so to speak. And now after you clean this with Kim wipe, this is Kim wipe, you will want to make sure again that the de uh, with the depth gauge that this depth is correct because likely um, the height of this um, this tube height is has changed since you touched it so you will want to use the depth gauge uh, right there here's the gauge right next to the NMR machine and what you want to do is to carefully insert your NMR sample uh, into this hole and you will want to make sure that the uh, sample holder is nice and flush with the uh, gauge right here height gauge and now this is ready to be inserted into the uh, NMR machine. And remember to keep the air compressor valve open. It's hissing air right now. Um, without the air coming out, if you put, put the sample in, it, it'll just drop and the glass will break inside the machine. That would be a horrible tragedy and I, I definitely wouldn't be happy that day. So you will want to put this while the air is coming out and notice it's floating. And then if, you, if I slowly close the air valve, the sample goes into the machine. Once your NMR sample tube is in the machine, the next thing you want to do is to shim the magnet. But before that, you will actually want to make sure that the nucleus that's chosen for the experiment is proton. And you can see that right there, it says H1. That's the right nucleus. We want to do a proton experiment. Now, if that said something different, sometimes it may say C13 uh, because either for our class or research purposes, we may use C13 NMR. Uh, you will want to go on the top where it says change nucleus and type in H1 and hit enter. That'll change the nucleus to, the, to proton. First, you will want to type in um, shim just the word shim, S-H-I-M, and hit enter, and it'll ask for a relaxation delay, uh, whoops, which is a number that changes depending on the concentration of the sample. Uh, for our purpose here, you could just type in five, and for the future reference, um, when you're, whenever you're doing a, a proton NMR acquisition, the sample concentration is usually such that the relaxation delay can be uh, simply five seconds or just type in five and hit enter and once you do that uh, the magnet or instrument will try to shim the magnetic field and what they do is the, the around this sample there's not just this one really big magnet that lines uh, that separates the nuclear spin into either alpha or beta spins but also there's these tiny little uh, magnets that uh, they can either they can uh, manipulate using electricity to to either strengthen or weaken the magnetic field, and they use those tiny magnets to essentially line up the uh, magnetic field direction just so right um, with respect to the particular sample tube that you just put in, and that sample tube um, sample tube the magnetic field. Uh, needs to be particularly lined up, specifically lined up for each specific sample and sample tube because it's going to be very different, slightly different. So this shimming process is um, important every time you put in a new tube or new sample. While the shimming is in progress, um, I don't know if you can see at the bottom of the screen, it'll say pulse program shim is in progress. 
and it'll take a few minutes to complete. Now that you're done with the shimming process, what you want to do is to type in NS, and that sets the number of scans. We want to uh, just run one scan, and the reason for that is we will want to see whether or not the calibration for the chemical shift is uh, on point or on target. Uh, we, or where it's supposed to be. We, you should have some TMS or tetramethyl silence um, standard already dissolved in your uh, deuterated chloroform sol solvent. And because of that, you, sh you should see a TMS peak, and we want that to be exactly at zero ppm. So what we want to do is to uh, go ahead and start the acquisition ZG. Type ZG and hit enter and you will want to find a folder that belongs to your lab. Uh, if you're in the two-state uh, Chem211, you can go here and then type in a sample name. Now, you want to start with the date and then your name and then the sample name. So, uh, in this case, I'll say 10, 17, 18, Tuck, Suyamra, AES. I am here, I'm, I'm here on, uh, during the uh, fall break, you know, because I love you guys and whatnot, and then hit um, enter that way that'll start the acquisition now after the acquisition is done you want to go to NMR nuts to see where the chemical shift is After you adjust the chemical shift for the TMS peak, you will want to come back to uh, Win PNMR, adjust the number of scans to this time eight. Um, if your sample is really dilute and you're having a hard time seeing your peaks, you could try 16, but 16 will take a while. So uh, we'll set it to not eight scans and then type ZG again. And once again, you want to go to the folder for your lab. And this time, since we're just um, retaking the same sample just with more number of scans um, if you find your file you can uh, use that file name to overwrite it but now when you do this you want to be very careful because if you accidentally accidentally click on somebody else's file name you will actually end up erasing their file now to process the NMR spectrum using NMR nuts first thing you want to do is to adjust the phase or phasing and to get into the phasing mode you want to type pH um, you don't have to hit enter in fact if you hit enter you get out of the pH or phasing mode and once you're in this phasing mode you want to use your mouse either the left or mouse uh, left or right mouse click and drag and I don't know if you can see the what's happening I'm dragging the left mouse uh, button and I'm, I'm adjusting the overall phase. Now phasing has to do with sort of how straight um, or how symmetrical each peak in NMR spectrum looks like. And uh, you wanna adjust that until everything looks as symmetrical as possible. First you wanna do the left mouse click, and then you wanna do the right to adjust the uh, some of the other peaks. And once you have a nice symmetrical NMR peaks, you want to hit enter to get out of the phasing mode. Once you adjust the phasing, you will want to type BC, and that's all you have to do. That does the baseline correction so that everything is flat at the bottom. This will help with your integration. Without baseline correction, your integration curves will look really off. Now, after uh, you do the phase adjusting and baseline correction, you can now uh, uh, do some peak picking. To get into the peak picking mode, you want to type DP, and you will want to uh, left click on top of each peak here. Now, um, to you want to peak each peaklet, not just each signal. Uh, for example, this is a quartet signal that has four peaklets in it. Uh, you will want to uh, select the top of each of those peaklets. Now, if it's really difficult to see each peaklet, you may want to um, zoom in first. And to do that, 
I'm going to get out of the peak picking mode by hitting enter. I'm going to get into the zoom mode. And to do that, I need to type in ZL. And I will drag the left mouse click button and select the area that I want to zoom into. And once it's selected or highlighted, you hit the right click button, it zooms in. And again, if you hit enter, you can get out of the zoom. Picking mode, of course, you can hit enter to get out of the DP mode. And now the only thing that's left is integration. And to get into the integration mode, you wanna type in ID. Uh, first, you'll see there's one giant uh, integration curve. And you can actually just use this as it stands, um, especially if you are willing to print this out and measure the height of the integration curve increase at each signal using a ruler and then get the ratio from those measurements. Otherwise, you will want to integrate each signal. And what you want to do is to you want to uh, use your mouse and um, left click twice right before or the left side of the peak. So I'm going to left click twice right there. And then um, the third click after left click after the peak. And that will um, integrate just that peak and then I will do the same thing for these two signals as well left click twice before the peak or signal and one, one click after two click before uh, one click after and now I have one two three integration curves and since I know how many protons belong to each signal I can actually specify that and to do so um, I can put the uh, cursor on top of the curve. For example, because I know the structure of the sample already, um, in your case, you're not going to know that, but if something looks like an obvious methyl group, like for example, right here, you may know that this is gonna be definitely uh, be worth three protons, or at least you think it might be worth three protons or hydrogens. And in that case, what you want to do is to put your cursor above it and then type V or excuse me, click on the uh, uh, signal and then type V. And here what I'm going to do is to type three because that peak is, should be worth three protons and hit enter. And once, uh, once that's done, what it does is to calculate how many protons each integration curve is worth based on that reference point, three hydrogens that I just specified. And sometimes this integration is not going to be exactly uh, accurate. And as you'll see here, this is supposed to be two protons or CH2 group. And the integration value, I don't know if you can see it, but it says 1.90, it's less than two. And on, over here, this should be worth five protons, but it says 3.21. Once you're done with peak picking and the integration, you want to go to view and choose show integral as well as show peak labels. And that'll show the labels and integration curves that you've just created. And then now you're ready to um, print. Now, we wish we had a printer here, we actually don't. Um, to substitute for that, what you want to do is to go to um, edit copy bitmap to clipboard or you could actually just do control c but copy bitmap to clipboard and then you will want to open uh, wordpad um, program and then do control v or paste and then you will want to then save this wordpad file um, in the uh, designated folder uh, for example in this case we're going to save this under uh, my documents and there should be a folder for your file, uh, for your lab, excuse me. And then you will want to save your file in that designated folder for the lab. And uh, once again, for the file name, same custom. Uh, you want to start the file name with the date, uh, today's date, your name, and the sample name um, all together. And then hit save. And what uh, we will do is to transfer those files I will transfer these files from this computer uh, using my USB stick. And the reason why we want to stick to that, pun intended, 
is because uh, the this computer, as you can tell, is a really old version of Windows that's not supported anymore. And so for that reason, it's very susceptible to any attacks from viruses. And uh, to protect from that, if we allow uh, anybody to use their own USB stick, they tend to be loaded with Trojan horse type of viruses that, uh, that can infect this computer. And for that reason, we just have a designated uh, USB stick just for this purpose. And the, uh, your instructor should uh, email the, um, uh, the NMR spectrum to you. It, it would be this WordPad file. After you're done with the NMR acquisition, you will want to take your sample out. And then, uh, of course, you can take your NMR sample tube out of the holder and take it back to your bench. Um, now, if you're the last person, you will want to put some sort of a sample tube back into the NMR machine. The magnet should not be, um, should always have an NMR sample in it. So here's a, a pre-made standard solution. I'm going to put that back in. But if you, if there's people waiting after you, you can just hand them this uh, sample holder. Okay. Now, just like with the IR instrument, after you're done with the acquisition on NMR on the NMR machine, you will want to log your use into the logbook. Uh, there's your um, initial, uh, today's date, uh, professor's name, and the time that you started your experiment, the end time, the amount of um, time that you've spent on the instrument.